All right, everybody. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and grab a new packet. So our 2B packet today, um, you can grab it from the front if you haven't done so already. Um, and this section of the chapter is going to be all about combining like terms and using the distributive property, um, which is kind of going to set us up for what chapter three is all about, which is solving multi-step equations. So we need to kind of know these prerequisite skills first. So first thing, we're going to turn to page one and we're going to go ahead and learn what a term is. Okay. So I said combining like terms is you know, this section of the lesson or this lesson. Uh, so a term is a number or a variable or the product of quotient of a number and variable. So let me show you some examples. So for instance, on the left side here, we have some terms. We have X to the third. Okay. That is a term. Actually, let me go back now. So I said a number or a variable. So for instance, three is a term. It's just very simply a number, but it is a term. 4y, that's a product, a multiplication of a number and a variable. That's also a term. A divided by 4, that's a term. And then x to the third, that's a term, right? It could also just be a variable, right? So just like p, that's a term, right? Now take a look at what's not a term. So we have 2x plus 5, we have x plus 2, we have 3x squared plus x plus 8. Those are not terms. However, they have multiple terms within them, right? So if we just look at 2x plus 5, how many terms is that? You might be thinking in your head, two. There are two terms here, right? So there's two right here. I'll even write it above. There are two there. X plus two, well, there's also two there. Right here, three X squared plus X plus eight. There are three there. So the way you might be able to decide what is a term or yeah, what is a term and what's not um, is those plus and minus signs. So plus signs and minus signs and equal signs split up our terms, okay? So that's how you can tell, okay, there's two terms in here, two terms here, and three terms here. Um, and here you go. That's what, as I mentioned, addition and subtraction separates our terms. Um, all right. So I ask how many terms are in these expressions? Um, you can go ahead and pause the video. I'm going to, you know, then when you unpause, I'm just going to answer all these. So you can go ahead and try this for yourself. All right, here we go. This one has three terms. I'll go ahead and, you know, I'll put commas after each. All right. So that kind of shows you how many there are. Two commas in all spots. So notice it's splitting where the plus signs are. So this one right here has two. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six. And this one just has one term. Remember that a, so, a, a lone number is in fact a term. Uh, let me hit one light in here. I think it might be better. Actually, I take that back. It looks just fine because it's uh, sharing my screen. All right, we can go ahead and turn to page two. And so we talked about terms, right? And what, how you decide whether something is a term or not, right? Basically, if it doesn't have any plus signs or minus signs, that makes up a term. Well, we can also have like terms. And what a like term is, is when two terms have the same exact variable to the same exact power, okay? So raised to the same exact exponent. So for instance, we have 4x squared and 12x squared, right? Notice how in red here I have the x squared highlighted. So those are the same. And we'll be able to do things with like terms, and I'll talk about that in a, in a slide or two. Um, but let's keep, you know, it's just so 4a squared uh, b cubed with negative 12a squared b cubed, right? So notice that these are multiple a squared b cubes. I know that sounds like a mouthful, um, but notice that when you have a combined, you know, multiple or multiplication of a couple different variables, that can also be the same term as long as they're exactly the same. So again, these are both a squared b cubed. Uh, or a to the second, b to the thirds. Uh, yeah, so those are like terms. And then negative 81 and 15, okay? Those don't have any variables to them, but they are both just um, what we call constants. And I'll actually talk about that in a future slide as well. But negative 81 and 15 are also like terms. Um, another term that you're going to have to know, at, when I said term, not to be confused with like terms or terms that we've been talking about, but term as in, um, I guess, definition or word you'll like to know. So another word that you would like to know is coefficient okay so um, a coefficient is a numerical factor or a number multiplying a variable basically it's the number being multiplied by a variable so for instance if we have the term 5x right here five is the coefficient it's five times the variable so the the number that is attached to the variable is known as the coefficient all right so right here we have a couple different things um this is also on page two so we have um a spot where i want you to go ahead and fill in the blanks so right here, this whole section is like terms. 
this whole right side is not like Terpstown. This is just an exercise to kind of like practice. Not very often I'm going to be asking you, hey, figure something out that's uh, not like term or not a like term. Uh, but this is just a kind of exercise to practice it. And at the bottom, it's saying the name of the coefficient. So before you even pause right here, let's go ahead and do like one of each section together. And then I'll have you try some yourself. Um, this is going to have multiple different answers. So it's not exactly just one answer. So let's give it a try. Let me make it a little bit smaller. So we have 9y squared. We have 13y squared. Well, I know that this next term should also be a y squared. I'm going to do negative 2y squared. Okay? And again, you can have plenty more answers. Your coefficient can change, but your variable must still be y squared. Um, all right, let's go over here to a not like term section. Again, this is just an exercise. So here it says 9y, 13y squared. Notice that those are both different variables. They have different powers. So you know, just another instance, maybe 10. Well, 10x could be a not like term. Just 10 could be uh, not like terms with those. Let's do 10y to the third, okay? Just to showcase that when our exponent changes on the variable, like if you have the same variable, but if it doesn't have the same exponent, they are not like terms. Okay, so you're gonna go through that whole thing. Um, and then the coefficients at the bottom, okay? It says name the coefficient. Um, so the coefficient of 5x is five, okay? Is that number in front of the variable. So go ahead and pause the video, go ahead and fill this out. I'm going to go ahead and just fill in without really explaining some examples um, from for six through eight, and then I'll tell the answers for um, 11 through, what is that, 18? Yeah, through 18. So go ahead, pause the video, and hopefully you've now unpaused, and here we go. So 5x, 7x, we can go 8x. Uh, 2xy, 3xy, we can go 5xy. And 4x squared y and 5x squared y, well, let's go with 8x squared y. Okay, again, we're keeping the variables and the exponents exactly the same when the um, when we're looking for like terms. Now for unlike terms, uh, we have 5x and 7y. Let's go 10z. Uh, 2x squared y and 3y squared x. Okay, so notice that those change a little bit. Um, we'll go with 10x squared y squared. Okay, those, that's not like terms. And then uh, it's hard to read up here, but I think it's 4x cubed y and 5x squared y. So we'll go with uh, 8. I don't know why I went with 10 with all of these, but 8xy. Okay, no exponent on any of them. All right, so let's go ahead and show the answers now for 11 through 18. Um, for the coefficient, again, remember, that's the number in front of the variable. So for 11, it's just 7. For x, uh, for x there's really a 1 in front of here, so that makes it 1 as your coefficient. Um, 1 half here. Um, for the y squared, that's also got a one in front of it. So there's no variable, there's no, no coefficient shown. It's a one. Uh, for 10, it's one third. For this one, a little bit weird. Um, y over three, there's a one. Actually, let me, let me show this one over here. There's a one in front of that y, but we can also just slide that y down. So this would be actually one third y. So it's actually the same exact thing as the one above it. Okay, a little bit funky looking, but yeah, this is one third. This one's 13. This one's one, and this one is two. Okay, so some of those are a little bit easier than others. Um, but yeah, number 12 and number, you know, I guess uh, 13 to begin with is a little bit tricky. All right, so what can we do with like terms? So like terms can be combined by adding their coefficients together. Okay, so the whole thing we're looking for is when there are like terms, um, that's when we can combine them. So for instance, we have 5a plus 6a. Well, that's going to equal 11a. We saw that the A's were the same. So we said, I like to think of them as items. We have five A's and we have six A's. So how many A's do we have in total? Well, we have 11 A's in total. So we add the five plus six and we get 11. And we keep the coefficient, or sorry, the variable exactly the same. Three X plus five X, well, that's gonna equal eight X. Because again, they are like terms. It's basically how many X's do we have? And we have eight X's. So here's a couple that you can go ahead and try adding for yourself. Uh, Again, you can go ahead and pause the video. I'm gonna start filling the answers right now. Okay, unpause, here we go. So seven Y plus three Y, well I know it's gonna stay as Y, but now I have 10 of them. For number 20, we'll go to the right. 13 X plus four X, well again, it's gonna stay as an X term and we're gonna have 17 of them in total. Right here, I like to put the one in front to make sure we're really seeing it. Um, so again, we're gonna end up with X's because we have five X's and one X in total it makes six X's. Um, 3xy and 9xy, okay, the term type here is an xy. They are like terms because they both are exactly the same. So 3xy plus 9xy, that equals a total of 12xy. Here we have 17x plus 13y. 
So those are different terms. Those are not like terms, right? Think of this as like 17 apples and 13 oranges. We can't combine those. We can't say, oh, like, oh, I have 17 apple oranges now, right? So when we combine like terms, we cannot combine things that are unlike. So this actually stays exactly as it is. 17x plus 13y. We cannot combine those together. They cannot be added. They will not fuse together to make an xy the same way that they will not fuse together to make an apple orange. All right. And then right here, we have a couple different, we have four different things listed. I'm going to go ahead. I, I see some x terms. I see some y terms. So I can combine some of each. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead in blue. I'm going to do a little underline of my x terms. And I'm going to do this one, the positive 3x. Notice how I'm keeping the sign with it. Well, actually, I'll just add that together now. So 17x and 3x, well, that's a total of 20x. And then we'll do in green, we have 13y and a positive 4y, which combines together to make a positive 17y over right, plus 17 just like that. Okay, so that would be the combined uh, result. And again, we cannot combine that any further or simplify that any further because 10x and 17y are not like terms. All right, on page 4a, so you'll flip over. So it talks about simplest form. You might have heard me just use that phrase right there about it can't be simplified any further. So something is fully simplified or in simplest form um, when there are no like terms remaining and no parentheses. So for example, if we have something that looks like this, 3x plus 5y plus 1. Well, this is not fully simplified because they have some like terms remaining that can be combined. So the 3x plus 5x can go ahead and be combined into 8x and the plus 1 stays. And we are done here. Okay? We cannot combine this any further because 8x is an x term and the 1 is a lone number, Okay, also known as a constant. Okay? That definition is right here constant. So a standalone number or a constant uh, can only be added with other standalone numbers or constants. Okay. So 8x and 1 are not like terms. We are done with that. Okay. We got one more page for you. So I want you to go ahead and try this. Again, I'm going to give one more demo. I'm going to maybe look at number uh, 26, let's just say. Uh, actually, no, let's do let's do 27. So I'll do 27 right now that you can pause it and try them yourself. And I'll just write down all the answers. Here we go. Um, so I like to, again, do some sort of like circles or underlines or things like that. Um, so since you might only have a pencil, I'm, I won't use colors this time. I'll use shapes. So we have 2y. Let's do it in black. All right. So I'll underline my, okay, we'll use green. But 2y, um, I have a positive 5y. Notice I'm keeping that plus sign with it. Um, and that's my only y's. Then I'm going to circle for my x's. So circle, and again, I include that plus sign in there. And then my constants will just leave by themselves. So here we go. 2y and 5y make 7y when I add them. 3x and 9x makes a positive 12x. And then I have plus 2 just sitting there. Okay, so that's all finished. There's how I use different shapes to kind of circle my, uh, you know, and separate my different terms. So I'm going to go ahead. Like I said, you can pause. and I'm just going to fill in all the answers at this point. And then you're done. And you can go ahead and work on homework. All right, so here we go. Um, I'm going to try to do this without talking. Just kind of write down all the answers. I'm thinking that's those are all squared. Yeah, it's a little hard to see on my screen. They are all squared. Okay, so there you go. There are the answers. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. I was just kind of rushing through, so I didn't make the video too long. But um, that should be the answers for all of them. All right, so like I said, at this point, you can go ahead and start working on your homework. Um, but that is a general recap or demonstration of how to combine like terms and what like terms are even in general. All right, have a good day.